Are you struggling to choose between the Garmin lineup of bike computers, particularly the 840, the 1040, the solar option, the regular option? You are not alone. I was in that exact same predicament a year ago when I ended up choosing the 1040 solar. And since then, I have put on a decent amount of miles with the unit and have a pretty good understanding of it, what its strengths and what its weaknesses are. And recently, a friend reached out to me and asked me, hey, I'm looking to replace my ancient Garmin 520 with something new, fancy, cutting edge. What are your thoughts and opinions on the 840 and the 1040 and which one do you think is right for me? Well, today we're gonna to try to unpack what those differences actually are, what my experience with the 1040 has been, what the solar's actually like and all that good stuff and try to answer that question and see which one of these is right for you. My name is Grant, this is Elru Bike. Let's get into it. Let me show you the setup that I'm working with on my bikes. Now I use this bike computer for my road bike, my mountain bike, and the indoor trainer. For the road bike, I utilize the out front mount because to be honest, I don't crash on the road bike, at least yet anyway. And so having it out front seems to work perfectly well. Now on the mountain bike, that's a different story. I crash all the time. This thing would not survive. And not only that, it looks terrible when it's mounted out front. You can reverse that option and use the out front mount as kind of an any mount, but that puts it in a terrible, awkward space. I A, don't like the way it looks. B, it's completely in the way, hits my knee. If I crash, I'm knocking it off. I have found this hybrid mount that's kind of a stem with a bit of a reach extender so it puts it out front and it's out of my way. I'm not bumping it with my knee or my giant belly and it seems to work pretty well. I'll leave a link for it below if you're interested. I've been very happy with it. And along with the Garmin 1040 Solar, I've got the Garmin Rally pedals which feed my power and my work information into the unit which then I put either into Garmin Connect or the Training Peaks app. So that's my setup. Let's move on to try and figure out what the differences are and how do you choose the right one for you between the 840 and the 1040. According to Garmin, this is directly on their website. There's a button that says, which power meter is right for you? This article by Garmin points out that the 1040 is guaranteed to take you to peak performance. The Edge 1040 provides a whole host of features that take it to the next level versus what the same article says about the 840. The 840, which is an excellent option, that still comes in at a mid-range price point with dynamic performance monitoring. This is the point where I was confused. One of their pages make them seem like they're identical. This article, which is linked right in the midst of all of their bike computers, shows that there's a difference. So I called them. The person I spoke to on the phone said, these bike computers are identical. There's no difference aside from the battery life, the screen size, and obviously the cost. I'm gonna leave it there because to be honest, I don't know if there's any features that one has that the other, ha that the other doesn't have. So we're gonna move on to the things we can verify are different. First one, obviously, the size. It's not only bigger, it's heavier. Actually, dramatically bigger. Let me show you here in a side-by-side. -side. You really can't appreciate when you just look at the dimensions. It doesn't mean as much, but this is what it actually looks like in real life. And to be honest, it's a pretty big difference. Now, one is almost the entire size of your hand. The other one is more suited to the palm of your hand. And now the bigger size means a bigger battery. And this is actually a huge difference between the 1040 and the 840. On the non-solar option of the 1040, you're looking at anywhere between 35 hours and 90 total runtime hours. Moving over to the solar option, this is almost unbelievable. You go from 45 hours up to 180 hours. Now on the 840 non-solar option, you're looking at a much smaller range here. You're looking at 26 hours to 48 hours. 48 hours is still a ton, but it's awful nice not to plug this darn thing in for like weeks at a time. And on the solar option of the 840, you're able to go from 32 to 78 hours, so a significant decrease, but still 
a fair amount of hours. And one of the cool things within the Garmin Connect app, you actually see how much solar gain per ride that you've gotten. Now, for example, I had a long five plus hour ride here and it shows exactly the solar gain you get per ride. It's one of those data fields that it collects. The screen on the 1040 is absolutely massive. And one of the things that that allows is the amount of data fields you're able to put on it. Now, Garmin says you can add up to 10 data fields on the 1040 screen and up to eight on the 840 screen. Now normally, I don't go over six data fields per screen. It just seems crazy. I kind of like to see them big. Another one of the areas where those extra data fields or that screen size comes in handy is on the navigation uh, screen. The, on the 1040, it's big enough that you can have a row down at the bottom showing two more data fields. You can show your wattage, your lap time, your speed, whatever is important to you and the map, and you can see navigation prompts up at the top, and you're really not missing out. That is one really nice feature of the giant screen on the 1040. Both bike computers offer the same amount of courses, up to two, I think it's up to 100 courses and up to 200 hours of ride history. So there's no difference in courses or ride history. It's only in actual map capacity. Lastly, the 840 retails between 449 and 549 for the solar option versus the 1040, which retails for 599 for the regular or 749 for the solar option. So those are the facts, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Let me try to leave you with some actual valuable tidbits here. In choosing between the 840 and the 1040, depending on what your main decision factors are, if price is your main deciding factor here, the obvious winner is the 840. Now, do you go solar? Do you go not solar? To be honest, I don't think the gains on the non-solar version are really worth that extra $100. If price is your main driver, stick with the regular version. It's definitely the best buy that you get the most bang for your buck. If price isn't the main option, the decision becomes much harder. And to be honest, I have really enjoyed the 1040 with the solar. I hardly ever have to charge the thing. The screen is huge. Once I figured out how to get it up and get it out of my way so I don't knock it on the ground and that sort of a thing, it's an absolute maniac of a machine. So my friend ended up choosing the 840. And to be honest, it's a great size. It's super versatile. And if you don't need the extra battery size and that screen size, it just makes so much sense. And unless Garmin wants to reach out and confirm that there are actual differences in functionality and a feature set between the two, the 840 and the 1040, it's almost a no-brainer to pick the 840 non-solar and save almost $300 over the 1040 with solar. That's a crazy extra. But I can say I have sure loved not having to hardly ever charge the thing. The extra big screen size once I figured out how to get it up and out of the way so I'm not knocking it off. So there you go. There's my recommendations. For most people, 99% of the people, I would say choose the 840 without solar. For that 1% that needs the best of the best or whatever your situation is, you just want that bigger battery life and the bigger screen, the 1040 solar will not disappoint. But that's just my take. I would love to hear from you if you've had a different experience or if I've left something out, leave it in the comments below. That's all for now. Thank you. Bye.